welcome, my name is Amber and this is my channel, A Fox Gloves Handiwork. Today's video, I will be showing you a baby sweater. I already started knitting it and I thought, you know what, let's film it. I have been kind of intimidated to film knitting projects, partly because that means I have to finish them. <laughs> and however, uh, here in the Midwest, we have quite a bit of snow. There's some, so we have some snow days and I thought a baby sweater is smaller, much more manageable and reasonable of a project to try and film. I have already started and I made a baby sweater in the same design. This was for a coworker's baby and I found the pattern on one of my Pinterest boards and I'll be sure to link the pattern below. It is a free pattern, which is really great. I have adopted the design. So for the first sweater that I made, I created the, the bumblebee pattern. And for this design, because it's winter, I was inspired by Dale of Norway sweaters, which are just beautiful. And this yarn is left over from the bee sweater. So I thought it's really soft. I lost the tags. So I don't know what it's made out of, but my guess would be some sort of nylon. It's not wool, which is my go-to, but it's super soft, which for a baby sweater is important. So for the pattern, this is just the back panel. So this is a sweater that gets stitched together. And the bottom here has the garter stitch. So just knitting each time. And then I have gone through and put these little white kind of hearts or dots. And then I put in a more intricate um, kind of cross with the golden color. So this is, I'm imagining, so a border at the bottom and then for kind of the top. So if you imagine the sweater continues, I want to you do another detail with this golden color, maybe a little, um, something a little bit more intricate. Often Dale of Norway sweaters have kind of a detail on the bottom and then it's super decorative on top. I'm not going that intense. We are starting small, but I've really enjoyed using different colors in my knitting. So we're going to continue with the back. I have done some knitting since the last time I filmed. So here is the front section and it has these two little look like cat ears are this part, right? Going up around the neckline. I decided to go with this kind of fun pattern midway through. And then I did a little bit of this same uh, little diamond pattern. You can see it a little bit better on the back. So here's the back panel. This will be for the back side. There. So now it is time to start the sleeves. So the sleeves are knitted on two 
typical needles are not double pointed. So it's like, just like the back, you're going back and forth. So we need to cast on 31 stitches. I chose to do the smallest sizing. I can't remember if I said that. Um, which the pattern says is about six months. The sun is peeking out, which is so lovely. Spring is in the air. I'm a little bit under the weather. You might be able to hear it in my voice. But I am so grateful for the sunshine and some knitting <laughs> and the weekend. Let me know down in the comments, what are you looking forward to this spring? And I'll answer the question myself. I am looking forward to gardening. If you have not checked out some of my other videos, I started this channel, we're reaching up a year, and I share some yard projects. I bought this house two years ago now and I put in a brick walkway I made a rain barrel uh, and I planted I had like a little vegetable plot oh I also made some compost bins so if those are things that you you would be interested in seeing someone do either if you've done it sometimes I find that YouTube there's like how to but I just enjoy watching <laughs> I'll definitely have those linked down below. So I'm looking forward to more gardening and more like flower gardening because I love the cottagey, you know, cottage vibes of just flowers everywhere. But I also want to grow more vegetables and herbs. I think this last year I grew thyme, which was my most successful herb and it just was so amazing this winter having dried time. But yeah, I'm still figuring out, I wanna do some sort of like creeping, gar like plants that creep up. So like cucumbers, I did that la those last year, but like some melons. Um, I also wanna get hollyhocks growing cause that's just like quintessential cottage vibes. So if those are things that you're interested in, definitely stay tuned to this channel. Uh, it's called Foxglove's Handiwork, and handiwork has very little limitations. <laughs> really anything that requires hard work and using my hands is what you might see on this channel. So I need to knit uh, seven rows in garter stitch. So let's just go and knitting back and forth. And uh, yeah, we'll get to it. So I've moved out to the couch and started the white little stitches. They look like little hearts. And so it's a similar, I'm gonna do a similar pattern as the main part of the sweater. I wanted to kind of walk through this pattern. So. If you have not used uh, color uh, in your knitting, I would say something like this is a really great place to start. It's just a little polka dot pattern. It's a high contrast, so it's like you can see it. And the pattern that I'm doing is there are five stitches between each one, and then it's offset is in the middle. And so I'm gonna begin this next row across and if I have it lined up right, this stitch will be above the stitch below it. So that's a great way to make sure that it's in the right spot is that using that visual cue as well as the as counting. On the edge here, I think technically this should be white, but since the edge is gonna get sewn Anyway, I'm just gonna leave it black. 
So I'm going to knit until I get to this, the first white. Or another way I just remembered, so I am, there we go. So I'm about to stitch the last, the last little dot, little heart. So it should be, I'm going to knit two and then the third one will be that middle point between. Okay, so now I've counted. So one, two, three, wait, yeah, one, two, <laughs> trying to do this backwards and it's kind of dark so now I'm on what would be my fifth one I pick up the yarn now I'm going to show you the back side so <laughs> I'm going to attempt to knit backwards so I'm about to purl And so I pick up the white. So see, it's down here. And I want to make sure that it's loose so that it, um, if it's too tight, it'll bunch up the rest of the, um, sorry, I got lost in trying to purl backwards. Uh, if this is too tight, it'll bunch up the uh, knitting. So do that loose. So you can see now it is kind of making a jump. I'm just, sometimes... And then I just let that hang, how I knit. So I think because it's English, I'm my hand's going over or I'm picking it up. I don't know how this works if you hold your hand, your yarn in your working hand. But then for the next one, so I pick it, the black just kind of jumps over, jumps over the white. Ooh. Ha ha! That's the first time I've knitted backwards. Or I guess I should purled backwards. So I'm gonna flop it the right way for me. Each other. So now I have my white one. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. So I have my fifth one here, and the sixth one is going to be a white. Bring it over. And if I've done this correctly, that stitch is, is it the, directly above this stitch here. It's kind of hard to see through the camera, so I don't check it. And then we again... <laughs> So now five more. Five, bring that white over. And you can see that it is directly above this one. I am now done with all four pieces of the sweater. And the next step is to sew the sleeves together. And I'm gonna sew it until the part where it's starting to decrease here. I'll show you this side. So I'm gonna do that twice. And then I have to sew all of the, called the Ragland, Ragland pieces together. I'm using some of the golden yarn because this is how much I have of the black. I do have a thing that I have enough to finish kind of the neckband, but we're gonna use the golden to stitch it. Hello, it is April 1st and here in Minnesota, we just got eight inches of snow. So it's a good nature's April Fool's joke. 
uh, which the snow has given me inspiration to complete this baby sweater. I just between my work and springtime kind of coming, I was feeling, I was losing motivation for this wee little sweater. And the snow today is giving me the, the, the push I needed. So part of what was interfering with motivation, it ran out of the black yarn. And I did not keep the tags because this was from a previous project. And I kind of was like, oh, do I, you know, run to a store to try and find some similar yarn or, and I just decided I have some black yarn. It's not quite the same. You can kind of see the change, but you know what? It's black. It's going to do. Uh, I have gone through this morning and crocheted kind of all the little loops or not loops, the, um, the tails. Let's see, do I have, oh, I was good. I did them all. Sometimes that's like the last piece. You just want to be done. So stuff like this, that's what I didn't do. So stitching it in so that it's secure, doesn't come undone. And the pattern has this front part is left open because I need to sew, uh, or not sew. I need to knit along the edge here and that's where some buttons go in so that the large baby bed, baby head can go through. It is turning out so sweet. I am so happy with the pattern. Um, yeah, this was a really fun project. So on to knitting the little cuff. So I found these two sweet little buttons that had come off a jacket and I thought that they would look really sweet. I'm also doing something different than the pattern because this black <clears throat> is more of a stark difference since there's more of it here than up here. This part will actually tuck under the sleeve raglan here and I'll have the buttons go this way so they'll poke through so we'll do one there and one right there to make the buttonhole I just finagled this until there was a hole not the official way but mm, I think it'll work. I also apparently have no black embroidery thread, so we're going with gray. I wanted to do embroidery thread so that it was tougher. So we do not need this button coming off and baby choking on it. got the buttons, our little sleeves. I have enjoyed sharing this process with you all. 
attempting to describe color work floating the yarn. This is by far the most complicated color work project I've done. Uh, and so really exciting to try and tackle this. I learned a lot along the way. If you are an avid knitter, please share down your tips that you use for color knitting or ba anything about knitting baby sweaters. I've really enjoyed it. I do want to do my next project or like baby sweater project, I'd like to do it in round because there's just, I mean, this was a great beginner with uh, the pattern side to side and I'll be sure to link the pattern below if you are interested. And again, I made up my own color design. I followed the pattern as far as the stitches and the design of the garment, but I created the, my own pattern I really love that creativity. It's kind of how my brain works. But again, if you enjoy coming along for DIY crafting projects, please consider hitting the subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. My name is Amber. This is my channel of Foxglove's Handiwork. And I'm here to explore and try new things and craft and yeah, find others who are interested in the same thing. So until next time, Bye.